Hey everyone, welcome back to Coffee Break Investing with me, Chris. Um, today I'm going to do a new investing video um, and I'm also going to give you an update on uh, what's been going on in my investing life. So um, I actually wanted to introduce you to my main analysis tool today um, and that is an app uh, on the App Store. I think it's available on um, the Apple Store and it is definitely available on the Google Play Store. So it's an app called Simply Wall Street. Um, and even if you don't intend to maybe subscribe um, to uh, the pro version, I think it's called, um, I do encourage everyone to go and check out the app, download the app and uh, give it a test run for yourself because it is free. And you do get a certain amount of an of introductory analysis for free. So I, th I think it's useful for every investor. So as you can see here, it's actually only got 3.5 stars, uh, which I don't really understand because I, I really can't recommend this app enough. Um, and I, uh, um, I'll give it five stars after this video. So um, for me, it's my main analysis tool. I do use other analysis tools like Yahoo Finance, um, uh, Motley Fool, and all sorts of other analysis tools. But this is my main one. I am a paid up subscriber, which costs £85 per year. Um, and I'm going to tell you a bit about the app today. So the, the introduction from Simply Wall Street itself is beautiful and detailed analysis of over 72,000 stocks and portfolios. So I'm going to open my version. And I'm going to just walk you through what all of this means as this, uh, this type of analysis tool is quite different to the other ones that I've seen. I would say that, um, to be honest, my other probably favorite analysis tool um, would be Morningstar. Um, I really do think that they get right deep into the data and um, provide you with a lot of useful information. But also Yahoo Finance is improving. They give you kind of bearish signals or bullish signals against the stock, which I do think is useful. So Simply Wall Street. This is actually one of my portfolios. So you see you have the tabs along the top. You've got Home, Stocks, Discover, Portfolios and Screener. So when you're a paid up member, you have full access to the Screener um, functionality. And uh, basically that means that you can set up all of your own screeners, as many as you want, unlimited. And you set up your own uh, filtering criteria across like most of the stock markets across the world. I mean, there isn't a stock market in the world that is not covered by Simply Wall Street that I want to or I even can invest in. I, I, I don't know how many markets they cover, but I th it, it looks like looks to me like it's more than 100. Um, so we'll get onto the screener functionality. But if I just start you off on the portfolio side of things, you also as a paid member have an unlimited number of portfolios. Um, I actually maintain a number of different portfolios to give me a different view on um, different people's portfolios and also just stocks that I've picked up on in the past that I'm interested in and I want to see how they progress. If they, if they, uh, if the fundamentals of the company are such that it becomes a company that I would like to buy as a stock. Um, Simply Wall Street makes it really, really simple and straightforward to uh, bring that stock to my attention. So just to run through my portfolios, I've got Buffett's Big Bucks, uh, my watch list, Dan's advice. Dan's uh, one of my best friends and he is an investment advisor. Uh, Fundsmith equity portfolio basically uh, mimics the portfolio uh, run by Terry Smith, which is a famous British investor. My holdings is, is literally my portfolio. So that is my actual investments in my actual stocks. Um, I'm going to come on to that one in a second. Roxana's portfolio, Roxana is my wife, and she's into things like retail and fashion stocks. So that's a that's a basket of retail and fashion. Shortlist is a is a portfolio I use every month 
to get a short list of stocks that I, I want to invest in. Um, stocks on the buy list uh, is a slightly longer version of the short list. And Tudor's portfolio, Tudor's my son, um, and he is, I generally, uh, in his portfolio, maintain things like toy companies and entertainment companies. So that's all that. That's all good. So just to take you, um, I, I can show you the other portfolios in the future. I'll just show you Buffett's. Um, this is obviously Warren Buffett's portfolio for Berkshire Hathaway. Um, and it might not be his perfect holdings, but it, it is basically all of the holdings that um, I'm aware of that he maintains. So to walk you through how a portfolio works, you've got an executive summary at the top. You've got a detailed returns report that you can download and um, you've got various settings but most importantly you've got um, this portfolio snowflake you also have snowflakes against each individual um, stock and just to explain what the snowflake is is it's it's a f uh, a six point scoring system against um, a snowflake with five different um, sort of attribute scoring areas. So Buffett's portfolio has come out with a value score of two, a future score of two, a past score of three, a, a health score of three, and a dividend score of like two and a half, I think. So what that means is um, you would need to use the tool to understand what each part of the snowflake make, means in detail. But value is basically the, um, the stock price versus the intrinsic value of the company and also versus the value that you can get with other similar stocks on that, on that particular stock market or country market. Future is essentially how much is the company going to grow in future past is past performance and includes some very useful metrics um, that i like to use like profit margin and uh, return on capital employed um, the health of the company is all to do with the balance sheet it's all to do with whether short-term assets outweigh short-term liabilities and whether lo long-term assets outweigh long-term liabilities it's also to do with the amount of debt that a company holds dividend is all about the income and the dividend that a company gives you so if there is no dividend this would get a dividend score of zero if there um if it's the maximum dividend you can get from a market and basically the analysis behind the scenes says that the company can afford to pay you that amount of dividend without getting into trouble itself then then that's the dividend score so going down to Buffett's holdings, um, we can actually order this, and I normally order my portfolios by total score. So this is the total score of the snowflake. So it's actually coming out as Wells Fargo, which is an American bank, coming out as the most um, worthy sum of investment. I think that's how you could describe it. Um, but Simply Wall Street does um, offers this analysis as an indicator and you are supposed to go into each individual stock do your own analysis and figure out the fundamentals on your own so we can go into wells and i'm not going to go into an in-depth analysis of wells fargo itself but i'm just going to tell you what it means and what simply wall street gives you so it give, first and foremost it gives you an executive summary at the top with rewards listed it gives you a description of the company and then the rewards and the risk analysis. So the risk analysis is, does Simply Wall Street think that this uh, investing in this company comes with any risks? And it is saying there are two risks here. It's had a highly volatile share price in the last three months. Uh, basically every stock, because we're in the, in the middle of 2020 at the moment, every stock in every stock market has had a volatile share price over the last three months. So that's not a major issue uh, for this stock in particular. And they're basically saying that the profit margins have gone down since last year. But the profit margin of 16.5% is actually still a very healthy profit margin. So that might not be such a big risk. Um, 
and it talks to you about the share price, the um, market performance of this bank versus other banks versus the US market over the year. Um, it has news and it tells you whether the stock is overvalued or undervalued. So actually, the, even though they're saying uh, Wells Fargo is, um, you should do your further analysis on it, they're basically saying that on a on a discount, what is it that they call it? Um, uh, discounted cash flow calculation, uh, sorry, using excess returns model, they do think that the stock price is currently overvalued. So that would be an indicator to me to not invest at the moment in Wells Fargo. So it goes down, it goes through all the ratios, PE ratio, P, uh, PEG ratio, PB ratio, future growth, which looks extremely strong for Wells. Um, so this gives you a very visual um, and uh, filtered view of which stocks you might want to want to invest in so also the last thing i want to just show you is the screeners so i have a ton of different screeners so you can see here that when you don't apply any screener at all so you have uh, you can filter by market by industry and by lots of other sort of metric type filters but you can also filter by the snowflake itself. So if you want to see uh, only companies with an absolutely fantastic future, you can just drag that across on the snowflake and you can see that it's filtered it down to 313 companies. Tesla being the company with the brightest future and the largest market cap because we're sorting by market cap here. Um, so, so yeah, future might not be the one metric that you want to filter on. And to be honest, I want to show you just my one of my favorite. Uh, I mean, you can see how many screeners I have here. I screen for everything. So I have Peter Lynch screeners, which is a, he's a famous um, American investor. I also have Ben Graham screeners here, Benjamin Graham. So I'm just going to show you my Ben Graham screener and then one more. So you can see that I filter extensively by market based on the um, based on the markets that I have available to me, and then I have various different filters on the different metrics and growth rates and all sorts of things. So we actually come up with nine companies in my Benjamin Graham screener. One of them is Unum Group, and one of them is Turkcell, both of which I am invested in. Um, and then I will just show you one more, which is Interesting Past. Interesting Past is one of these screeners where <clears throat> I do a deep dive into um, profit margins and re spe specifically return on capital employed, which is probably my most important metric, um, having listened to a lot of professional investors that have said that that's their most Im uh, important metric. So this looks at, if you just look at the advanced filters here, looks at market cap. So I, I tend to choose companies with large market caps. Um, return, on in, return on equity ratio, the value calculation as performed by Simply Wall Street and the three year return on equity estimate. Um, and then within these companies, I will look at the return on capital employed to decide who I would invest in. My recommendations here would be Roach Holding, which I do have an investment in. Johnson & Johnson is definitely on the watch list, or, and so is Merck. And Pfizer I'm already invested in. Um, automatic data processing is another one that I would recommend uh, because well, I, I'm, I'm invested in them. Um, and then the list goes on. These are really strong companies that should um, get stronger over time, in my opinion. Okay, guys, so it's a very brief video, but this is my, uh, not review of Simply Wall Street, but my introduction to you of my analysis tool, Simply Wall Street. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that walkthrough, and if you've got any questions, let me do know down in the comments. Please subscribe, please like the video. I really appreciate all of your support, and uh, yeah, have a nice weekend, everyone. Bye for now.